aircraft making a condensation trail is very similar in many ways to when you go outside on a cold day and exhale, you create a condensation trail. That little cloud is a condensation trail. Now, if you take a two mile walk on a cold day and you can turn around and you can see your condensation trail tracking all the way back for two miles, that's how crazy it is to think that what we're looking in the sky is actually condensation trails. The contrails, not the chemical, the contrails occur because of cold air, minus 30. It takes a high altitude, around 30,000 feet plus. There's a carbon dioxide and water vapor in that exhaust. That turns to ice crystals, and that's what you see, the white stream behind it. Those white crystals of ice warm up, dissolve, and the smoke goes away. And it never lasts more than a minute. What we're seeing now, and I first could not believe it, and I started looking at the skies, and these are not normal. They're not natural. There's something going on. I don't know who it is or why they're doing it. All I can testify is it's not natural and it's not normal. Constant respiratory problems that are now epidemic. Is there any connection between this and the growing epidemic rates of other human diseases that are proven to be connected to highly toxic, heavy metal exposure? Lab tests from around the globe have long since proven a mountain of heavy metals like aluminum, barium, and strontium are raining down on all of us. These metals are the primary elements named in climate engineering patents. Yes, this is connected to the dirty, dingy, often checkerboard striped toxic mess that we see in our skies day in and day out. If you don't believe it, it doesn't matter. You're still breathing this contamination with every breath. And it's building up in your body. Several dozen lab tests from Shasta and Siskiyou counties alone, about 70 I believe, prove this beyond any shadow of a doubt. Why aren't we being told? Why don't meteorologists and institutions like the Weather Channel say a word about climate engineering? Because they're owned by corporations like Blackstone and Bain Capital. Corporations all connected to the umbilical of the global power structure. Does anyone believe the paid actors at the Weather Channel would tell the truth about climate engineering, knowing their jobs or perhaps much more depend on them saying whatever they're told to say? Perhaps we could ask Weather Channel meteorologist Nicholas Wilkin. Unfortunately, though, we can't because he died last month. And what Fox News said was, quote, an apparent suicide. His car was crashed through an Atlanta parking garage and plowed into an adjacent hotel. That's a strange way to commit suicide. But perhaps let's ask the meteorologists at the National Weather Service or the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. But no again, because virtually all the National Weather Service and NOAA government employees are still under a federal gag order. Don't believe me, please investigate it for yourself. If you're willing to look at the truth, if you want to see meteorologists going to unimaginable lengths of lying to try and explain away the completely unprecedented and completely engineered weather scenarios that are now the norm, watch the Weather Channel for a while. Connect the dots. Watch the behavior of the Weather Channel actors as they give truly an ever more complex and implausible fabricated explanation for weather scenarios that are historically unprecedented and meteorologically impossible without the climate engineering factor. Again, we have engineered snowstorms happening in the West with the center of those storms, like one I mentioned last week, winter storm, quote, Kayla, the center of the low pressure of a, quote, winter storm pushing 80 degrees with tornadoes on the, quote, warm side of the storm. Where is our sense of reason? This is not normal. We have massive temperature whiplash fluctuations from uh, 50, 60 degrees in a single day. This is extremely devastating to the biosphere. And this can't happen naturally. It's from chemical ice nucleation related to weather modification. Please look it up. Look up every term I state. You'll find lots of data if you choose to look. As the public wakes up to the climate engineering nightmare, the crimes of climate engineering, I believe they'll hold accountable as accomplices all those who have lied to hide the geoengineering insanity. Perhaps trials like those held in Nuremberg are coming, one would hope. If you still refuse to believe weather warfare is going on over your head every single day,
day. Stand by. As I said before, you'll believe it soon enough. Now is the time to establish policy in this vital area, beginning with public oversight of geoengineering. Now, House Bill 6011 is an important step to ensure that no one engages in climate engineering within the state of Rhode Island without the express approval of state officials and only after careful review by state agencies with the expertise to assess risks and the efficacy of these proposals with input from the public. Now, we support 6011 for the following reasons. First and foremost, Bill 6011 is necessary to protect human health and safeguard the environment. The 1991 patent, now owned by Raytheon, proposed seeding the atmosphere with metallic particles such as aluminum oxide. Now, according to the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, exposure to high levels of aluminum can result in respiratory and neurological problems, possibly including Alzheimer's disease. Geoengineering methods also propose seeding the atmosphere with sulfate aerosols, sulfur dioxide, hydrogen sulfide. According to the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, exposure to sulfur dioxide affects the lungs, and at high levels may result in burning of the nose, throat, breathing difficulties, and severe 